Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and for my final in the series for Lent, doing the series that I've been working on each week, I wanted to do something that I did last year, which was tell the story from the crucifixion all the way to the resurrection. This is last year's page, and this year I'm going to do a giant rock. As I try to show you some simple ideas that pretty much anybody can do, even if you can't draw, this is going to be one of those really easy ones. And so I have this giant rock that I've cut out of computer paper, make a hillside on the left hand side, just a little curve. And then I'm going to paint some color. If you want to do this in another medium, you can do that. I'm going to do it in watercolor. My words are going to still be readable on the page, but I'm going to have a real impact from a full double page scene here. And I'm going to put the crosses in this space over here. So I have the hillside there that has that beautiful sky above it. And then I'm going to put browns all over the place. And if you wonder how you mix a brown, just whatever's left over in your palette. If you have a messy palette like mine, it's a great way to use up all that paint. Uh, sometimes I just wash all that off so I can start fresh with new color. But before I do, sometimes I like to find something that I'm going to paint that has a lot of brown in it because you can just make a mess. And what I'm doing is painting color on here and then using a baby wipe to give it texture. So you can paint it on with a nice big number 12 brush and then move that color around with your baby wipe. The baby wipe will also lighten color so if you get it too dark in a certain area you can kind of wipe it off. It sort of works as a little bit of an eraser as you move that color around, picks up some of that color. Now on the right hand side I want to make sure I start leaving a C shape and that's what I held my mask out so I can get a general idea of where that's going to be, that edge, and just put color everywhere else. Because what I'm, I'm envisioning here is for the rock that's in front of the grave to have a spot on that right hand side where light is going to be bursting forth. And so I'm going to just keep coloring around it, but I'm going to try to leave that C shape. Now I've ironed it to flatten it out and thought I'd show you that there's nothing on the back. Watercolor is one of those mediums that you can see through really well and it doesn't bleed through. It's one of the reasons I like it a lot. And now I'm taking darker mixes of pigment and I'm using purples and blues and all different kinds of colors instead of just plain old brown because that can kind of be boring. So layering some other colors in there with it and just holding that mask over it. So I get this general shape of a big old rock. If you want much darker color, you can paint straight onto the baby wipe and add that color on there and then paint that on and you'll get even denser color. So it depends on how dark you want it. On that outside right hand side, I'm going to not have to read the words so I don't have to worry about it getting too dark. On the left hand side, I wanted to create a rock that's going to be in the foreground, which is the, the rock that the grave has been hewn into as opposed to the rock that's sitting in front of it. So create a little bit of that texture and then extend the rock up and above. I don't know if you've been following along with the Lenten Bible Journaling Challenge, but I have been blessed by it this year. I, this felt like a very different Lent than I normally have. And I've learned so much from those who are participating on the Facebook group and so grateful for them sharing their insights and what God's been teaching them through the same scriptures I'm reading. It's wonderful to go through it with a group of fellow believers and Bible journal along the way. It's kind of like a Bible study, even though we're not together doing a study, but even those who didn't have the book were participating and they were just looking at the scriptures and asking God to speak to them. So it's been a real blessing that way. If we do more challenges in the future, they will be on that Facebook group. And I will have more information as each one, each time I go through one of those challenges to, um, to share with you guys. There is one coming up for Bible lettering starting April 1st. And I'm going to, I think, participate in that one. We'll see if I make it through. I'm kind of exhausted with having these daily posts of whole Bible journaling pages, but doing some lettering in a sketchbook might be a little more doable for me. Now I'm going to I've ironed it again and I'm going to start creating that that burst on the right hand side by creating I guess a difference in the rest of the rock. So I'm using some watercolor pencil. This is a black watercolor pencil 
and creating a little bit of an outline around the rock because that's going to push the rock that's in the wall, the rock that the color is hewn out of, into the background and the other rock is going to start, the, the big round rock is going to start looking like it's coming forward. I also want to do that same thing on the left hand side. I want to have the edge of the rock that you can see the, the scene in the background over in the distance, but that means I have to create something in the foreground that's going to make it look like, like there is something in the distance way back there. And just scribbling with some color, not color pencil, watercolor pencil. And you could do that with colored pencil. If you don't have watercolor pencil, you can use regular pencil over top of your watercolor. But what I can do here, since it's watercolor pencil, is use the baby wipe to soften out some of those areas and you don't see pencil lines. So it depends entirely on what kind of a look you want. And then iron again after this so that I can start working on putting the last steps on here and the last details and adding the little crosses. Now, I don't know whether it's just a Christian tradition that we put two little crosses with one big cross. <laughs> I know the scripture says Jesus was in the middle cross because he had a thief on either side, but we always make them littler. I don't know if they they had size differences between the crosses back in the day. Now, to create that burst where the light is going to be coming forth from the grave, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to mess around with a couple different things. I was experimenting as I went which is often how my Bible journaling goes. I started out with a gel pen. And while the gel pen is wet, you can kind of move it with your finger. Sometimes you may find that happens by accident if you lean on something. So you can use it to your advantage here. You can also get some white acrylic paint. This is just some paint I had in my drawer. It doesn't matter what brand. And start moving it around with your finger to create that, that light burst coming through. If you mess up, like I wasn't liking how this looked, I was trying to move it with a baby wipe and it actually did move it. It does move the color underneath so you'll get a little bit of a weird thing in the rocks behind you. But, you know, it's just rocks. So it, it worked for me anyway because it gave sort of a glow around where I wanted this, this little star to be. So I made it in a sort of a star, sort of a cross shape. And I used my watercolor brush eventually. Now if you use your watercolor brush with acrylic paint, wash it right away. Don't let it dry. You'll ruin your brush. Don't want to do that. And then when I was all done, I ironed it and that smoothed everything out. And you can see I, I had removed enough of that paint that now I'm going over it again with one last layer of white gel pen to make that star and that, that cross shape really pop out of there. But when you do iron it, make sure you're really careful because normally I tell you to put a piece of paper above and below it so that you protect the paper and then iron it for like 10 or 20 seconds. Iron it for like five seconds and then let it cool and then five seconds and let it cool because the acrylic paint and or gel pen is going to melt and it's going to stick to that paper that you have on top of it. So you don't want to let it sit there for very long. Let it cool, lift up that paper and then do it again. And what I did for my journaling was on the left hand side I put the fate that should have been mine. So that's reflecting the, the death that should have been mine. And on the right hand side has been conquered and bursts forth into new life. And then put some personal journaling in the bottom sections about my thoughts about that, my gratitude for Christ saving me and for all he did for me. So that is my page for this week. And next week we'll be doing something totally different with our Bible journaling, but I thought I'd do a flip through through the last days of the Journey Through Lent series. And if you want to go back from the beginning, you can go back through the playlist that I've created to see them all. Now here we were studying where the woman poured out the oil and anointed Jesus. And what I thought about was that he poured out, she poured out her love and service and he pours out his love and service on us and anoints us for our trials. This one went a little AWOL because they referenced the verse in John about destroying this temple and I got hooked on the temple and if he had temple written on his shirt, on his robe, and pointed to it and said I'm the temple, would they have gotten it? I don't know. I'm not sure if they would have caught on. I'm not sure if I would have caught on. 
And then we got to the the communion bread and cup. And what I focused on this time, I don't think I've ever drawn the bread as flat, unleavened bread, because wouldn't that be what they would have been eating, I think? So yeah, there you go. We always do a white, fluffy Western loaf. And that was different for me. Then we did the foot washing and study the foot washing. And I made some monogram towels for Jesus. If I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing is the translation from this Bible, which is a message version, the message. And then for my Good Friday piece, this was really powerful to me because this whole study has taught me that really Jesus fulfilled every word of the Old Testament. We studied a lot of Old Testament scriptures and he to the very, very, very end was fulfilling every word of the Old Testament. And then we come to my final piece for Easter. And I hope you've enjoyed this series. God bless you, doggy, in the background. <laughs> I will see you again next week with a regular Bible journaling video. Feel free to join us on the Facebook group if you'd like to join in on that other challenge as well with Bible lettering. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful resurrection celebration. God bless you. Bye-bye.